So far, we've looked at just calculating the Fourier series of a function. We may have benefited from knowing that the integrand is even or odd, but we certainly haven't actively done anything about creating even or odd functions to be integrated. This is what we will do now when we consider the half range even, or cosine, or the half range odd, or sine expansions. So we simply change the function we start with, and that will have some impact on the calculations. But uh, let's wind back first. So far, if we were given a function f of t, and we were asked to find its Fourier series over an interval, we would uh, limit the function to the interval, and we would make it periodic. The function would then look like something like this. So we have period L, um, periodic function, the interval is from 0 to L. Now, we would then find the Fourier series of this function, um, and we would be done. I've uh, sketched an example here. This is what we would do with f of t equals t squared um, on the interval from 0 to 2. We would extend it periodically. Um, you can see it's not an even or an odd function. We simply find the Fourier series of this function. Instead of doing this, though, um, there's a second approach we could take. We could um, extend the function, and we make it an even function before we find its Fourier series. So um, starting with the original function from 0 to L, we add a new definition between negative L and 0. So we have a symmetrical interval. Um, we have just have to make sure that the function becomes an even function. We'll do this by defining it as f of negative t. And of course, you can recognize the definition of an even function in there. So we're constructing an even function. I've again sketched what this would look like for f of t equals t squared. So instead of just having these um, repeating half branches of t squared, we're actually completing the t squared. It becomes even, symmetrical about the y-axis, and of course it then still continues periodically. So now we have an even function, and we find the Fourier series of this even function. If we use this method by first extending the function to an even function, we then call um, this the half-range cosine expansion, or even expansion, and uh, of course the resulting Fourier series would be the Fourier series of the half-range cosine, or even, expansion. There is a third method we could take, and that is to extend the function not to an even function, but to an odd function. So instead of defining um, the function to be f of negative t, which would make it an even function, we define it as negative f of negative t, and that makes it an odd function. There's our example again. So this branch here for t squared, if it's extended to an odd function, we'll just go down here. And uh, we simply find the Fourier series of this new function. Now, this new function is the half-range sine expansion, or odd expansion. So the Fourier series is the Fourier series of a half-range sine or odd expansion. So which one of these three methods should you use? Well, they're all equally valid between 0 and L, because they are representing t squared on that interval. Um, what happens outside doesn't really matter. So it doesn't matter which method you use, what we are after we'll get out of this. But of course, um, one or the other method um, could make it a bit easier, because we might be able to simplify. Now, when you're asked to find a Fourier series, in this unit, it'll be made very clear what you're asked to find. So the full range Fourier series is the normal Fourier series, and uh, when you're asked to find half range Fourier series, um, it is specified if it's the even or the odd Fourier series you're meant to find.